worthy to be praised on this morning. Hallelujah. Come on with it. Come on with it. Hallelujah. We didn't pump it. Come and pump it pride, nobody. Hallelujah. You know what God has done for you. Hallelujah. You know what he is to you. You know how he has made ways out of your way. Hallelujah. Come on and give it to him on this morning. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Hallelujah. Come on and give it to him.
If you're on the Lord's side, hallelujah. We're taking it. Get up. Hallelujah. Get up. Get up. And I'm not talking about physically standing up. Get up in your spirit. Hallelujah. And praise God. Hallelujah. Think of the goodness of Jesus. Get up in your thinking. Hallelujah. And think of what he has and is doing for you. Hallelujah. It ain't all thing about physical standing. Hallelujah. But it's about getting up and taking a little time out with him. And talking with him. Hallelujah. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I don't know about you, but I have my time with him. We all need to have that private time with the Lord. Hallelujah. He makes a difference in your everyday walk with him. Hallelujah. Taking that time out. Spending that time with Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a personal thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many can say actually yes to the Lord?
we are grateful that you are God. No matter who we are, no matter what mistakes we make, we get a refreshed grace and mercy every single day. And I'm glad that, God, every day you built in a new beginning. God, we come with expectancy in our heart as, we, as you allow my Father to do the word. Use it, God. Use him. Use his mind and use his feet. Use his feet to walk us through it. Use him to, to show us that it is possible. Use him as your vessel, God. Please silence anything in this room that is not of you. Please continue to guide our steps along this service. And please allow us to remember that no matter what we go through, no matter what grief we bear, no matter what weight we carry, no matter what mistakes we make, no matter what we tell people, even if we lose our cool, Lord, let us remember that you are God. Let us remember, Lord, we come to you. We come to you, Lord. Everything that we are, everything that we have, and we give it to you. God, I'm so grateful that I can come. And I can come and meet you. I'm, I'm glad to be at a church, God. That you didn't have to meet me here. You, you were here when I got here. And I'm grateful for that, Lord. I'm grateful that, that I didn't have to pick you up on my way. <laughs>
open your mouth and say, this is holy. consider all that you've done. You've paid an awesome price. My praise comes with an awesome price. You gave your life. And as we gather on what is known as Palm Sunday, we're entering, entering into a period called Passion Week. <laughs> Season of Pesach. Come on, y'all, lift your hands right here. Lift it, lift it. Lift it, lift it. Holy Spirit is in this room. He's here. This is 
one of those moments. Pray for the family. 
Thank you, Lord. In the book of Haggai, chapter 2, go down to verse 6. For thus says the Lord of hosts, you got it? Yeah. Haggai, chapter 2. Praise God. The last two weeks we've been having you in Haggai. Palm Sunday. Yeah. The Sunday when Jesus told his disciples to go down to a house and you'll find a donkey tied. Loose that donkey and bring it to me. Yeah. And if the owners ask you, what are you doing? Tell them the Lord got use of yes, it. Sir. Lord has use of this coat. Yes. The Bible says they brought the donkey to Jesus and they draped coats over him and Jesus got on that donkey and he rode into the city of Jerusalem mm -hmm. and the people were shouting praises. Hosanna. They were shouting, Hosanna! Yeah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yes. Hosanna, that name simply means save us, Lord. Yeah. Savior, Hosanna! Yeah. And people were shouting, they were praising him. Right. And it's amazing to me that the same folks yeah, right. that can praise you today. Uh, right just a few days later. And not even, not even, not even the, the week hadn't even ended. Right. Same folks on Sunday shouting hallelujah, Hosea. Uh -huh. We love you. Praise your name. By, by Wednesday, that same crowd. We're shouting, crucify it. Kill it. Yeah. I told y'all the crowd is fickle. Yeah. You better not get caught up in the praises of people. Right. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you the same advice that was given me. When people praise you, don't let it go to your head. And when they criticize you, don't let it go to your heart. That's good advice. Isn't it? Don't get caught up in people's praises because people are fickle. Hallelujah. You do what you do as unto the Lord. Haggai, chapter 2, verse 6. For thus says the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and earth, yes. and the sea and the dry land. Hallelujah. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory. Hallelujah. Yes. Says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine. Says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the, of the former, says yeah. the Lord of hosts. Yeah. In this place, God says, will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. I want you to notice how many times he kept saying, says the Lord of hosts. Yeah. Did you notice the repetition of that phrase? Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody got a, a driving a black and white Nissan Sigma. He's blocking All right. Black and white, Nissan Sentra. If you will, go move your car, whoever you are. Praise the Lord. A black and white Nissan Sentra. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know we have limited parking space. We're going to get you over in this field after a while. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We want to make sure we keep the driveways open. Don't keep those, stay out of those people yard. I know some of you don't know that. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. We're just glad to have you this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say, praise the, praise the Lord. All right, flip over to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 26, down through the end of the chapter. Hebrews, chapter 12. Glory to God. 26 through 29. 12, 26. You got it? Amen. Hebrews 12, 26 says, whose voice then, talking about the voice of the Lord, at Mount Sinai. God spoke at Sinai and shook the whole mountain. I don't know when God really speaks, he shakes the If God is really doing some talking, some stuff gonna go to shake. This is why this is why I know everybody who says God's talking, he ain't talking. Because if God is really talking and ain't no change, that's probably not God really talking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because when God speaks, his voice shakes things. Whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised, saying, yet what? How many, how many more times? Once more. Once more. Say, this, say, this is it. This is it. Yet this is it. once more, I shake not the earth only, not just a natural situation. God says, but this time, I'm shaking spiritual systems. Come on. Heaven. I'm yes. shaking heaven. Yes. I'm shaking spiritual systems. Yes. I'm shaking things. Watch this. God says, I'm shaking systems. 
that's been in place for hundreds of years. My God. Just because your organization been in business for 150 years doesn't mean it was of God. Please don't judge the longevity of a thing, amen, based on whether it's right or wrong. Sometimes the wrong thing can stand for years. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. Sometimes just because thing has been around for a long time doesn't mean it was right. But God uses what God does. God waits until he gets the right thing in place. Then he begins to shake that wrong thing. Yes. Say shake me, Lord. See, a lot of us have been in directions. We've been in certain life directions for years. But this is the season where God is shaking things. And the purpose of God shaking is that he may bring things into alignment. Thank you, Lord. He says, yet once more I'm going to shake not on earth only but also the heaven. And this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made. I'm going to shake stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when the shaking is complete, only that that cannot be shaken is what's going to remain. Because many things are just superficial. They look good on the surface, but remember we talked to you about the earthquakes. And how earthquakes can reveal sub, um, subpar construction. So earthquakes has a way of revealing things that are really not up to code. You know how it is whenever you got a building and you have to bring a code inspector in. Right. So he can inspect the building. A lot of things that was built 100 years ago doesn't meet today's code. No, right. So it has to be either upgraded or torn down. Yes. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Now, his warning, if we don't let God upgrade us, he'll tear us down. Anything that can't be fixed needs to be demolished. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Which leads me to where I want to take it this morning. Hallelujah. God is shaking things up. There's number one fact about a shakeup. When a shakeup occurs, watch this. Don't be surprised when God is really shaking things up. Don't be surprised that things get worse before they get better. All right. Sometimes when God really moving, come on, y'all. When God, see, see, see you, 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 you can't judge the initial stages of a thing because even in a renovation project, the initial stages of renovation is demolition. Yes, that's right. You got to tell some stuff. That's right. That's some stuff got to come down. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's interesting. It's interesting that when we engage in a massive cleanup effort, that oftentimes things get worse before they get better. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I decided one day I was going to tackle a closet. I got halfway into the project and wanted to quit. So what? Ty not tired. Tired. There's a difference between being tired and tired. Your pastor was tired. I was working on that thing. You still got work to do. My queen come and bless her heart. She said, baby, I know you're tired. Just, just leave it for now and do some more later. No sweeter words never been spoken. Now I got to get back over there and finish what I started because I got mess everywhere. I got a room that's tall. I don't, we don't let nobody go in that room. Because every time I look in that room, I get tired. <laughs> Things sometimes have to get worse. You remember when you remember when the uh, the, 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 the the father bought his son who that the son that the spirit was in, and he would convulse that kid and throw him in the fire and all kind of stuff. I remember reading that in the Gospels. Hallelujah! The Bible says they took him to the disciples, but the disciples couldn't get rid of that devil. So they took him to Jesus. Hallelujah! And Jesus, Hallelujah, spoke one word. But I want you to notice before the devil left the boy, the Bible says the devil told him one more time. Sometimes when you speak the word of deliverance, listen to me. Listen to me carefully. Sometimes when you stand and speak a word of deliverance, don't be surprised if things get worse when they get better. Amen. Because the enemy is not really excited about giving up his territory. They don't want to leave. And he's not a lot of time not going to leave quietly. Hallelujah. But I don't see no other way Jesus had to say it twice. He said, get out of it. Jeez. That's right. Amen. 
Then later on, later on, we are led into a conversation that Jesus had with his disciples. Yes. And they said, Lord, why couldn't we cast that devil out? Yes. He said, number one, you didn't really believe, but number two, this kind. There are certain classifications. Yeah. There are certain categories. Yeah. There are certain maladies that people get into yeah. that a little low level prayer ain't going to cut. Yeah. There is an intense level of prayer that we got to begin to operate in yeah. before certain spirits going to respond. Y'all can say amen if you want to. Yeah. 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 Some of this stuff that people are into now, it takes some intense praying. Yeah. And it also takes a readiness of mind. On behalf of the one you're praying for. Yes, Y'all didn't expect me to say that. Yes, Hallelujah. So sometimes things get worse before they get better. That's right. As I said, when you you, you, you start tackling that closet, you start pulling that clutter out, the clutter's pulled out the closet. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. All of a sudden you start stirring up dust. Yeah. And the pile gets bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, but you don't know, you really don't know how big of a mess you got until you start digging in Ooh. and start doing something about it. That's and the Lord is saying it's time to do something about it. Hallelujah. Yeah. We got to deal with stuff that we've been shining for years. We got to deal with church. We got to deal with stuff that many of the church has been trying to just sweep under the rug, yeah. trying to yeah. just sweep under the front pew. Well, it's time to get that stuff and deal with it now. The number one fact about a shakeup, listen to me, the number one fact about a shakeup is that don't, in the initial stages, things will usually get worse yes. before they get better. Yes. But don't give up. Don't number two, when God is in the midst of doing some major renovations and restoration in our lives, initially, in the, in the early stages, God's renovation looks like punishment. Right now. Lord, why are you punishing me? Come on here, somebody. That's right. It feels and looks like punishment when God going to start dealing with you. It looks like punishment, but really it's not punishment. It's not punitive, it's corrective. Yes. Say corrective. Corrective. <laughs> you know the penal system is called correction centers. <laughs> but they're doing very little to correct things. Because usually when people are released from the so-called correction centers, it won't be long before they use it right back up in there. When I was going through orientation so that we could go into prison ministry, we, the, the, uh, the, the, the warden was conducting the class, and one of the main things he said what we're really trying to work on is the recidivism rate. We're trying to, y'all know what recidivism is, right? We're trying to bring that rate where people, that whenever people get out, they stay out. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the mind of God. When God gets you out of your dilemma, he wants you to stay out of it. Yeah, yeah. It don't make no sense at all. That's my daddy was at all. It don't make no sense at all. Amen. Whenever you're free from a box, to turn around and get right back in. Jesus. Say, don't go back in. Don't go back in. What the Lord brought you out of. Paul would say, don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Yes. When God frees you, stay free. Stay free. This is what the Holy Ghost told me. He says, when God releases you, when God when God's working on you, it's not punishment, it's positioning. Yeah. Come on, say he's positioning me. Some of us are being positioned, some of us are being repositioned. Yeah. You're being repositioned, you're being repostured, hallelujah, oh, yeah. so that God can do what he wants to do in you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's impossible to think you that God's going to do his work in your life and you stay the same. Yeah. Right. Say positioning. positioning. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit said, I'm in the early stages of positioning, but it feels like punishment. Sometimes God's positioning feels like punishment, but he's not punishing you. He's preparing you. Yeah. That's right. Say preparation. preparation. Say positioning. Position. Hallelujah. It's all synonyms of the same process. Many times, a major restoration, a major renovation is preceded what looks like a rough season without a reason. I said, it looks like a rough season without a reason. Yes. Lord, why is this happening? Yes. I don't understand this. Yes. 
Look like time I'm gonna make ends meet. Somebody moved the other end. Time I think I'm finna win the game. They change the rules of the game. Is there anybody in the house who know what I'm talking about? Look like everything that can go wrong goes wrong. Look like look like when you start praying about the thing, it got worse. The person you've been praying about now they're acting worse. I can't get no help in here. Whenever you start turning your face to the wall, hallelujah, like Hezekiah did when, he, when Isaiah told him, get your house in order, you got to die. But the Bible says he turned his face to the wall, hallelujah. He turned away from the situation. He turned away from external conditions, hallelujah. And he turned his face to the wall. Sometimes you got to turn away. And he turned his face to the wall. And say, Lord, remember how I walk with you. In other words, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and presented his resume to God. Y'all ain't gonna help me. <laughs> Lord, I want you to think about this. Lord, I did this. Hallelujah. Now, I know, now really, we can't brag about anything we've done. But when you know you've done all, you know how to do it. Oh, somebody. When you know you've done everything, you know how to do. Hallelujah. And Lord, everything that I thought, I would not uncover every rock, God. I unturned every stone. And everything I wanted to do, Lord. Remember, Lord, he presented his, his resume. He submitted his CV. <laughs> his curriculum vitae. He presented that thing to God. Lord, look at him. Lord, I got some definite places in my life. Now, Lord, and the Bible says before Isaiah even got out the yard, <laughs> God turned him around and said, go back and tell him he's got 15 more years. The right kind of prayer can reverse a death decree. Come on, somebody. The right kind of prayer can reverse the decree of death. Hallelujah. The doctor may say you've got to die. Hallelujah. Medical science may say there's nothing else we can do. Medical science say, hallelujah, the cancer has metastasized. And there's nothing else can be done. But we serve a God. Mm, he's able. He's able to do his seating. Abundantly. Above. Somebody say exceeding. Say abundantly. Say above. Beyond. Anything, everything we can ask or think. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly. Again, sometimes in the early stages. This is why you got to fight to maintain the right perspective. Because many times, all of us at times. We will deal with circumstances that's picking on us. We're going to deal with stuff that look like it ain't working. Hallelujah. Lord, I prayed about this thing, but look like when I started to pray about it, the whole thing got worse. Hallelujah. Look like when I started praying for my marriage, my marriage got worse. Look like when I started praying about my husband, that rascal got worse. Hallelujah. Look like when I started praying about my wife, that girl really lost her mind. Y'all ain't going to help me here this morning. When I start praying for my children, them jokers got worse. But I know a God, he can take things, hallelujah, that look topsy-turvy right now. But God is able to turn it all around. Somebody wave at this shot, yes. God is able. Oh, Prophet Mosley, God is able, sir. He's able to do exceeding, abundant above all we can ask of him. Keep on believing. I'm going to pull an old song out of a secular artist. There was a group named Journey. They released a song in the 1980s. They said, don't stop believing. Think of somebody and say, don't stop believing. Uh, because one thing about faith, faith doesn't make things easy. Faith makes it possible. Come on, say, it may not be easy. Come on, say, it may not be easy. But it's possible. an episode of Star Trek. The Next Generation. And Captain Jean-Luc Picard. 
He said everything is impossible until you do it. <laughs> that made the whole show for me right there. I can, I can turn the TV off right there. I got, I got the best. Everything is impossible until it's done. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> when God shakes things up, the restoration and the renovation is preceded by what looks like a rough season without a reason. It's a sign. Come on, say the shaking is a sign of the shifting. Before God can bring a new order in, He got to first upset the order that you're in. Before God, oh, watch this. Before you can go into a new season, before you can embrace your next season, there is a measure of discomfort that you got to have in your present season. Some of us don't. Some of us can't shift. Look, at, look right up here now. Some of us can't shift. It's because we're too comfortable where we are. So God has to let the present situation get crazy. Come on, let's get crazy. It's getting crazy. Oh, it's a good kind of crazy. There is a bad crazy, but then there's a good crazy. Because God has a way of using crazy. God has a way. He has a way of taking us through these seasons. And, and, and again, hallelujah, you, there, there, has to be a, there has to be a discontent that hits your spirit. There has to be something in your spirit to let you know there's got to be more to this thing than what I've seen. There has to be something troubling you inside. Of there's got to be something better than what I've already had. I would hate to think that what I've already seen is all I'm going to see. If what I've already seen is all I'm going to see, then what use is it to keep living? Mm, but I got a sneaking suspicion that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard and it hasn't entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them that fear him. Anybody love the Lord and hear this Lord? Anybody fear the Lord? You have not really even fully begin to conceive all that God has for you. Ooh. And I just heard in my spirit, somebody said, well, look like I'm the only one in my house that's feeling this. That's good. Because all God needs is a seed. All he, need, all he needs is a seed in your house. Right now, hallelujah, there's always a season of feeling like you're the only one who get it. Do you remember when Elijah, when, when, when Jezebel was chasing Elijah? Because Elijah had killed all her prophets. You remember the showdown on Mount Carmel? When Elijah said, let the God who answers by fire, let him be God. Hallelujah. Elijah said, pour water on the sacrifice. Then Elijah said, dig ditches, dig ditches around the sacrifice. Then he, said, then he said, fill the ditches with water. Hallelujah. Elijah prayed a little 60 word prayer. It wasn't even a long prayer. He prayed a little prayer. The Bible says, and the fire of God fell and consumed the sacrifice and fire licked up water. Never seen that before. Anybody ever seen fire lick up water? The fire licked up the water. And Elijah got a sword. Hallelujah. He got a sword. And he began a head cut ceremony. He began to kill all them false prophets. False prophets. A lot of them in the land today. False prophecies. A lot of them are in the land today. They're simply trying to tickle people's fences. Doing and saying anything to get in your pocketbook. Talk to me somebody. But when a real prophet stands up, when a true prophet begins to declare the word of the Lord, the fire of God will fall. But Elijah was on the run. He was scared. She issued a decree. That woman said, by this time tomorrow, you took the heads off my prophet. By this time tomorrow, I'm going to have your head. And Elijah was running scared. See, there's always, I said that to say this, there are always times when you feel like you're the only one. He thought he was the last one left. He went in here and said, Lord, come get me. Everybody done backslid. The Lord said, let me paraphrase. He said, boy, you crazy. He said, I got 7,000 who has not bowed the knee to me. Yes, sir. Mm. And 
this is the season. Watch this. Hear me, hear me about the Holy Ghost. This is the season that those that are hearing from God, hallelujah, is being providentially positioned along with others that are hearing from God. There's a gathering taking place. Listen to me. Hallelujah. You're witnessing the gathering of the eagles. Because some, there's, a, there's a verse of scripture in the book of Revelation that many people have misinterpreted. There's a lot of revelation being misinterpreted. Yeah. They take Revelation and put it way out of yeah. And Revelation, is, a lot of it is behind you. That's right. A lot of Revelation has already happened. Yeah. That's right. When John said, whatsoever the carcass is, the there were the eagles gathered. Yeah. And people missed it. They thought he was talking about vultures. No. No. Just in case you're wondering, there is a vast difference. Between a vulture and an eagle. Just in case you're still confused, you can just tell they're different just by their diet. Vultures feed on stuff that's been dead, smelling, and stinking. Vultures like roadkill. Come on, y'all. And something that's going to smell it. Now, ain't no vultures in this house. But an eagle, hallelujah, is not a scavenger. A vulture is a scavenger. But an eagle is a predator. An eagle wants his stuff fresh. An eagle wants his stuff that's still moving when he gets it. Y'all ain't hearing this yet, hallelujah. Y'all ain't got it yet, hallelujah. He wants his stuff still moving. <laughs> come on, some looking for. Oh, come on, eagle. Come on, some looking for something that's still moving. Come on, say I'm not interested in something that died last week. Come on, say I'm not interested in your dead religious system. Come on, look at somebody and say I'm not interested in something that died last year. I'm not interested in a system that died 10, 15, 20 years ago. Come on, say, but I'm looking for something that's fresh. That's still moving. And this is the gathering of the eagles. Because wherever the carcass is, wherever the bread is, wherever the fresh food is, that's where the eagles gonna gather. I'm gonna catch that after a while. The eagles are being gathered in this season. Because then because God is raising up a people. Listen to me. It's part of that shakeup. God is raising up people who are not settling for the status quo. There was a time when I might have would have settled. Come on, say, but I ain't settling no more. Come on, say, I'm not settling for anything that's less than what God comes. See, when see Queen, let me tell you something, Queen. Whenever you find people that just settle for stuff, they're not an eagle, they're a buzzer. You find yourself just settling for anything, you're not an eagle. You're a buzzer. You just you come on. You just you just settle for dead stuff. Stuff that that don't start stinking. You settle for stuff that the eagles flying over. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. When God shakes things up, when things go into a direction that maybe you didn't see coming, because there's some things happening. I'm talking to some folks in this moment. There's some things happening in your life that you didn't even see coming. Oh. Things begin to happen in your life that you didn't see coming. Hallelujah. You can be assured of this one thing that God led you here. God is strategically positioning his people in this hour. God is leading people to New Beginnings Fellowship Church. People who would never thought that there would never be in a place like this. Oh, a little old metal building sitting side the road. God knows how to get you out of certain places. God knows how to get you out of the pain. He knows how to get you out of a rut. Somebody say yes, Lord. He knows how to bring you to a place where you need to be. Because there's an eagle on the inside of you. Come on, say, I'm an eagle. I don't hang out with turkeys. I don't hang out with chickens. I don't hang out with buzzards. Come on, I'm an eagle. Woo! I said, woo! Woo! Somebody 
You are sitting, set on a hill, cannot be hid. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its savor, it ain't fit for nothing than to be cast down and trodden under the feet of men. Somebody say yes. Lord, make us salt. Because one thing about salt, if you ever get a hold of some salt, it'll make you thirsty. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. If you ever get a hold of salt, it won't be long. You're going to have to find some water. And if somebody going to taste your life, they ought to be thirsty for the one that you're representing. Somebody say hallelujah. If they ever see you, if you can just get you out of the way and magnify the Lord with me. Baby, say magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Somebody say yeah. Shake up means pray to Say shake up. shaking up? Check the praise life of the church. If the praise is moderate, if the prayer is just moderate, then the move of God will be moderate. Say prayer. Pray. Praise. praise. Those are two things that must never be stopped. Hold it. Prayer and praise. Keep it in queue. I'll give you a wave in a minute. Hallelujah. We're going to fly here in a minute. I promise you. Mm, somebody say yes, Lord. Jesus said, this kind, this kind, we got, we see, let me tell you something, church, y'all know, y'all know this, but let me tell you how, this day and time, we leave, we, we're dealing with this kind of demons, we got some this kind of devils that's in the land, and I'm telling you, they're not going to respond to just low level, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I'm sitting down before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. You got to cut that mess out. You got to get in this and intensity. First of all, if you're going to pray effectively, you got to know this word. You got, to, you got to know this word. If you're going to pray powerful prayers, you got to know the word. And then you got to know the God of the word. God, oh, what couldn't we do? Jesus said, this kind doesn't go out. But by prayer and then fasting, which is the intense level, intensified. It's an intensified level of praying. It's a prayer that calls you to turn your plate over and say, I'm not going to stop until I get what I'm after. It's a prayer that calls you to suspend your normal activity. Because you can tell by looking at me that eating is my normal activity. Y'all missed that. But whenever you do it, but, but, but there's a place in prayer that if you're going to really get something from God, you got to suspend your normal activity. There's some days you're going to get up and you're going to say, I ain't eating today. 
You don't need to wait to pass the pastor tell you. Listen to the Holy Ghost. He'll tell you, hallelujah, skip breakfast today. I want to talk to you. Holy Ghost is in here. Hey, 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 skip lunch today. I want to talk to you. Holy Ghost is in here. Hey, please suffer off tonight. I want to talk to you. Hey, in this time. You got something in your life? That's playing in you personally. And it don't seem to want to leave you. Start turning your plate over. Say, so, okay, Lord. I got a situation. That don't look like you want to budge. And I need you to do something for me, Lord. Do it for me, Lord. Just for me, Lord. I'm going to turn my plate over. I'm going to skip lunch today, Lord. I'm going to skip supper tonight, Lord. I need you to do this. After a while, the prayer get intense, and after a while, the crying is unrehearsed. The tears start flowing. Lord, I need you to do this for me. Oh, if you don't do it, Lord, this can't be done. Does anybody know what I'm talking about right here? Nobody else go. I'm going. If don't nobody else do it. I'm doing it. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm not going to take a poll. I'm not going to try to get the, 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 the support of the crowd. I'm going to do it because God said do it. When the earthquake happens, foundations are shaking. Chains and prison doors are open. God is doing something big. He was doing something big. God did something big in the life of Paul and Silas. You know why? Because they were obedient and because they were faithful. Now please hear this. I'm going to close. Sometimes just being obedient can land you in some bad places. Paul and Silas were obedient and they landed them in prison. Oh, have mercy. What do you do? When you've done all you know how to do And you still find yourself in a place that you didn't expect to be in. I didn't think I would end up here. What do you do when obeying God gets you in trouble? What do you do when obeying God causes people to turn their back on you? What do you do when oh, just simply doing what God tells you to do causes people that you thought, people who swore they would never leave? People who looked, people who looked in your face and swore to you. I got your back. You look around and they go. What do you do? I tell you what you do. You stay obedient and you stay faithful. That's what you do. And after a while, God will send an earthquake. And after a while, that dilemma that you're in, God will shake it up. Come on, say shake it up, Lord. As God leaves us, he will never leave us. Did you hear what I just said? I said, wherever God leads us, he won't ever leave us. God is leading new beginnings. And God is not going to leave new beginnings. Because where he leads, he never leaves. Hear what I'm saying? Where he leads, L-E-A-V-S, he never leaves, L-E-A-V-E-S. He stays with us. Come on, say, he's with me. I said, long as I know. He's with me. That's all that matters. God has a way. Let me close this. We're going to pray. We're going to get off of Facebook Live. God has a way of shaking things up, Facebook audience. God has a way of doing things that goes beyond our imagination. He has ways of doing things. Time you think you got God figured out. <laughs> 
God will shake things.